Judy Matt. Thank you. You uh, must be happy. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very happy. <laughs> it was it was a nice surprise. I wasn't expecting it to be honest because the day was quite challenging for me. And after the match, uh, I wasn't really sure what to think of my shooting performance. You know, yeah. relative to, relative to some other guys, I felt like I was struggling just as much as them. So it, yeah, it was yeah. a nice surprise. Yeah. You know, there is a uh, um, there is a uh, there is a lot of merit and just you know sticking with your plan and doing your own thing yeah even if the weather is tough and uh because it's tough like you said it's tough for everyone yeah so dang it that's uh, what i forgot make make a plan <laughs> yeah i never make plans I'm, hey, I'm just out there i'm just happy to be alive hey mr g man how's it going good buddy Pretty good what am I is like so zoomed in? <laughs> I feel like <laughs> it's everyone's everyone's kind of just zoomed back. It'll move back a little. Back. <laughs> the, the, way, the way your headphones are, it looks like you're completely bald. <laughs> yeah. You look like well, kind of, yeah, I'm not too far from that. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you know what? Hold on. The way it produces the hair. No, he's gonna, like, he's like gonna like grab a hat. <laughs> what, what hat does he have? Oh, he's got his apex hat. Oh, yeah, a nice hat, hat, Thomas. Nice. Hey, that's a Go. sick hat. Everybody, everybody I talk to is is waiting patiently. Well, no, they're impatiently waiting for patient. I don't know, shipment. but waiting, yes. <laughs> yeah. You should have seen Tom uh, sprint to the prize table to I grab know. that. <laughs> exactly I, I what I wanted. He, he called dibs good. on it. I was actually I said, debating. I was like, oh shit! If my name comes up too early, like I might have to grab like a fifty percent. MDT, but really, <laughs> he wants the hat. <laughs> yeah, we had oh, a certificate. We had an Phoenix Apex certificate. Hands right after. He oh yeah, sold, he got sold to someone. Really? Yeah. Nice. Because I guess he he he. Well, he asked the guy if he was going to use it, and he's like, "Oh, I'm not really sure." He's like, "Well, I ordered something from Kdex, yeah, and I'll pay you for it, so it'll be good for both nice. of us." And I'm like, "Well, that's 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 a good deal." <laughs> All these deals, all these deals that happen. It's pretty, pretty awesome. But it's good. It's good. Yeah. Everybody's happy. We had a good bread. We had a good price table there. A lot of certificates on that table. Yeah. I lot almost of, bought of, me a vortex, uh, vortex banner. Nice. <laughs> Chris, Chris Logstrip grabbed it. I got one of those. If you want one. I know. I know a guy. I've, I've replaced it by your banner, uh, Asmir. I know, I know a guy. You know, you so know a guy. A, we're a bit, we're a minute out. So just to remind everybody, what happens? We'll go. Uh, we're gonna play the intro, then we'll uh, kick off the intro, and then Asmir, I'll turn it over to you for any new, new, noteworthy items you want to talk about. Okay. And uh, and then we'll get into the topic of the uh, CRPS uh, season kickoffs, and then we'll we'll chat about cleaning and iPro and all that good stuff. Yeah. Actually, we'll talk about iPro first, I think, right? Yeah. Perfect. That is awesome. Good job. Hold on. Yeah, Matt, you'd, you'd be so proud of me. I cleaned all my rifles. <laughs> I know. I saw you on the fire line. Just <laughs> I was <laughs> going ham. I was. I was. It was. And you know what? They cycle so much nicer when they're clean. <laughs> yeah, it's no weird. Hangouts. It's like yeah. a mechanical device works better when it's clean and I know. lubricated I know. properly. <laughs> and, and some of those rifles had never been cleaned. Yeah, that's... Uh, so. Yeah. so it's a torture test. Anyway, mm. all right. We are uh, 9 o'clock. Stand by, everybody. Hey, 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 shooters, episode 45 of the Rimfire Nation podcast, proudly brought to you by Tesro.ca, Tesro himself, Asmir, live from his, uh, his warehouse. He's, he's, uh, he's got the, the most enviable basement room in the world. This is, this is my aspirational. Uh, you're looking at right there, all this here, KT You know, Asmir, welcome. Thank you for coming on. Matt, Tom. You guys, and without any further ado, Asmir, why don't you let us know what is new and noteworthy on the Tesro.ca website? 
Well, we got some good news for CZ lovers. Apparently, oh, the yeah? shipment has landed. I uh, yes. they were unpacking it today, so we're very excited to to renew the CZ stuff. I don't know what we're getting yet. That's why. I, that's how I find out that uh, the stuff surprise is surprise package. <laughs> no, they just the inventory, inventorying everything. But uh, it's quite sizable. I do know we're gonna get some actions, some barreled actions. Oh, so really? Nice the guys that are that are waiting for those, and then our builds that are waiting for the barreled actions are going nice. to be uh, available. And um, you got and magazines in that shipment? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, nice. so so I, I I don't want to promise anything, but I think that uh, it's going to be lots of things that we've been waiting for. Um, hopefully, some uh, most importantly, magazines, barreled actions. Uh, those are the things that we kind of have been um, the missing link, and nice. uh, and some new rifles as well. I think there's there's six hundred. No, nobody's talking about 600s. We'll talk about 600s later if you want. Okay. There's a, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's lots of talking about 600s. Because because I'm I'm intrigued by the 600s. Oh look, unobtainium. Thomas has got yeah. a pair of unobtainiums there. I'm a, I'm a hoarder. Yeah. yeah. And, I have spares. Um, yeah, and we and we'll we'll talk about the eyewear later. We got uh, we got our shipment from the Wiley X, but we'll mention that when we talk about uh, eye protection. Nice. Uh, Later on, um, I did get some news on Ely. Um, it's still looking June-ish. Nice. So um, we might get it maybe a little bit earlier, but uh, um, it's it's on its way. So that's uh, that's a good sign. Um, and um, I'm waiting to get any firmer news on the SK ammunition, but it's still scheduled for kind of that, that similar time frame so we'll see who gets here first um and uh um yeah and what else uh what else is doing here i'm just trying to think what, what else did we get we got uh javelins are back in stock nice. um we haven't had those especially for a pr1 reticle we haven't had them for a while so those, those are back in stock um and you have the citron s8 and we do have a side train. There's the, that's the big box right behind me. I, I, I saw it on on Saturday. It was, it was a pretty spectacular piece of it, optic hardware you got there, 40 mil it tube. Is, it is certainly the largest scope, I, uh, rifle scope I ever held in my hand. It is uh, <laughs> it is uh, quite a quite a beast. That's um, nice. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a big scope. It's by yeah, like, it, there's yeah there's no nothing else to say. Oh, it's a big scope, but it's a uh, it's quite nice. It's uh, it's packed with a lot of good stuff in there. Does, does it come with rings? Yes. Okay, good. Because yeah, I don't think anyone 40, makes yeah. forty mil rings. Are it was already bad enough with loophole making thirty five millimeter tubes. Yeah. So thirty fives are like there's two companies that we know they make rings, decent rings yeah. for for thirty fives, and then for forty spur is the only one that makes rings as far as we know. Nice. Um, nice. And the ones that come with. Um, uh, with Cytron. Nice. Um, and uh, we quietly uh, quietly dropped it to Cytron. The Stack should have a Christmas tree style reticle in it. Nice. Um, so hopefully they will listen and come back with something good for us next year. Um, and uh, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. I mean, we were pretty excited. We're going to be getting lots of, uh, hopefully lots of CZ stuff um, nice. next week. And uh, um, we'll be we're putting something together. We we've been putting some some uh, pistol builds together. Um, not maybe not suitable for this uh, this podcast, but uh, well, just... I don't know. Shooters are shooters. It's if you put if you put a pistol down with a pile of pistol ammo, they will shoot your ammo and have a good time <laughs> doing it. As <Asmir. laughs> shooters will shoot anything, shotgun, you know, even even muzzle loaders and black powder. Yeah, yeah. Goes shoot. bang. We're in. Yeah, yeah, if it goes yeah. bang, they'll, they'll they'll happily pull the trigger. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Well, it literally goes up in smoke because I mean, one I yeah, black powder. Like you, you shoot one, <laughs> and then you gotta gotta wait. You like the wind because it blows everything away. You know what you yeah. should do, Asmir? Have a demo day at Stitzville, a test road demo day. We could help get that going. Yeah, All the, your shotguns, your center fire CZs. Wait, or... shotguns? Yeah. Are you getting the CZ shotguns? 
They're coming. They're coming. Yeah, we're, we're talking. We're talking. Lead his vice. There yeah. You go. I know, right? Yeah. Come on, Matt. So let's go. <laughs> I Come knew. I knew light. you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we do. We, we do have. I mean, having Stittsville for I guess for all of us, so so close by, and it's a pretty nice shotgun range. It's it's kind of shame not to go at least once. I think in a it's month. the best way to blow off work and spend a Friday afternoon. It's not law of work, and you go for business meeting, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. For for Asmir, it's work, work, work. That's right. That's awesome. Thanks, Asmir. And uh, reloading components, you're uh, fairly well stocked. Some uh, Hornady stuff is coming in, trickling in. Us, uh, we be like we've been kind of getting shipments every two weeks. Um, for some, a tips came in. And they're gone. Some more came in. We have some in stock, but you know, things these days are yeah. kind of like saying you're well stocked would be a big lie. You, um, you have you have some stock. We have some, yeah. We have some um, rifle powders are coming in the summer sometime. We do have pistol okay. powders. We just got a bunch of pistol powders. Um, and for those guys reloading pistol, um, we, we have some. And until, well, I guess we're going to have some probably for a couple of weeks. And then next shipment won't be until. I would say midsummer sometime. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, do you want to talk about six hundreds now? I want to talk about six hundreds later. Well, let's let's cover it right now for those yeah. that aren't familiar with yeah. the six hundred line is the 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 new center fire series from CZ. Is that, yeah. is that right? That's right. Yeah. So CZ is kind of CZ had uh, two two and a half lines of of center fire rifles. They had five twenty seven, which was a mini Mauser. So that was for the um, you know uh, your two two threes seven sixty two by thirty nine and you know smaller kind of calibers, and then five fifty seven which was three three oh eight and and you know six point five family of calibers so larger, and then they have five fifty um, which was kind of larger kind of elephant gun type of calibers, uh, right. pretty ex some exotic stuff. Um, so what they've done is they um, they they. They came up with a new series called CZ 600, um, and uh, comes with a which is going to have three basically three sizes of the actions depending on which calibers you have. So small for the you know your 223 and 762 by 39, uh, medium for you know 308, 6.5 Creed and stuff like that, and then a large for like 300 Win Mag and and uh, 300 PRC and and the, the, those kind of calibers. Right. Um, so then it was announced late late last fall, um, and um, yeah, and then they have you know a couple of nice packaging. Trail is the one that everybody's going crazy about. Um, lots of guys kind of really interested in it. It's a good good bush gun, um, and um, and uh, yeah. So the the original proposal from from CZ was that the barrels would be easily exchangeable by the end user. Right. Unfortunately, there was a recall on that. Uh, which I think is the reason why we're getting them so late. Um, apparently, the, the uh, with the with the barrel exchanging, you could put it back with the incorrect headspace. Okay. That could, that could potentially cause some uh, um, injuries to the to the users. If um, so, basically they scrapped that whole idea of user exchangeable barrels. So I think they're gonna just gonna either glue them or pin them. He was one of the okay. standards of putting the barrels in. Um, we don't know what that means for interchangeability. That could mean that you know you can, it could still be doable by dealers, um, and uh, they just don't want end users to put it with the with the um, uh, incorrect headspace. We don't quite yeah. know. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, that they they got into U.S. market first, um, and uh, there was lots of lawyering and suing in U.S. market. Um, when it comes to these things, so I think they're being extremely careful. Um, and um, but unfor it's quite unfortunate that uh, that feature was dropped. That was a big selling feature. Of yeah, for sure. Um, some guys don't really care. They want to get it. You're, they're going to get whatever caliber it is, and they're going to. That's the gun they're getting. They don't really care of the right. you know, being able to interchange it. So we'll see. We just want to get a couple on hand and, and play with them because. Uh, yeah, it, it looks nice. There's lots of there's lots of innovative features on on it. Um, new trigger and uh, the bolts yeah. have been redesigned. It, it looks that the offerings are also quite quite nice in terms of the stock. Um, and of course, I got 
I got a messages from MDT guys. They they want to see it. Um, that could also mean that you know if if it becomes popular, they might be see some MDT uh, um, um, drop in options for it. So um, but we we can't we want to get some in so that we can talk about it with with kind of rifle in hand and 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 talk about this one. Yeah. And have it a bit. So um, there's a lot of anticipation for it. Unfortunately, the the this whole recall was a little bit anticlimactic. Um, but at the end, I think we, it's a bit of a silver lining that we didn't get them as early as we thought we would, because they'll fix this issue. So there's really no recall for us in Canada because there's no rifles in Canada. So we just, we're going to get the modified fixed version, um, out of the factory. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of, a, that's kind of a bit of a silver lining to the fact that we're getting them so much later. And the, and the price is quite attractive. I think they're really going after a couple of other brands that are um, competing in that kind of uh, um, price segment. Um, so should be should be interesting. Should be interesting. Uh, you know, we're we're quite excited to get them, but uh, uh, we're waiting just like everyone else. It's too bad. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing them in country and checking them out at the at the test road demo day at Stittsville. Whenever that is, whenever, yeah, whenever, whenever that is, yeah, perfect, awesome, good. So why don't we recap? So we we I think all all four of us spent the day together with forty other people, <laughs> and even more for the Ontario kickoff of uh, the CRPS twenty twenty two season. The week before was the uh, Atlantic Region kickoff at uh, Buktush, New Brunswick. Wicked, wicked, tricky wins. Wicked, tricky wins this weekend also. So. You were at both matches, uh, right, Rick? Correct, yes. Nice. Yeah, 2,000 2, kilometers in one weekend. Drive. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's a busy it's, week for you. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a warm-up. It's a warm-up to the Western trip. <laughs> nice. So just practicing, making sure everything was, was working right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was good. It's a good day. We had, we, had, we had a good sunny day at Avonmore. It was a little overcast, a little cooler in uh, New Brunswick. Uh, we, had, uh, we had just over a about a dozen people shoot the New Brunswick match. We also had a Rimfire Competition Academy event the day before that had ten people there, so it was a full full house there. Nice. So it was good. I think good. I think people are finding the the value of it, which is which is cool. I mean, we saw we saw the Duncans and uh, James Ruddick was there, so they were they uh, they they put their education to to good use and and they were just thrilled. You know, I saw them ringing ringing the uh, full lipstick at three hundred. 17 yeah. yards and yeah, just a silly grin on their faces what was it colin Dukan, karen yeah colin Dukan, and, karen. and william his last name i'm not so sure Derigon. Derigon. yeah yeah that was good three grads good three grads yeah, yeah and and karen shot top female shooter which was awesome yeah, that's right yeah, yeah that's right and there was yeah. there's three or four uh women shooters right correct yeah sophie and uh avery, avery as well course. avery yeah avery yeah. yeah yeah that's awesome that was good that was a good day yeah and more and more people are i'm watching the registrations across canada so there's there's more females taking advantage of the uh, lady shoot free this year which is which is good to see and, and and new names as well which is which is super nice so yeah so far so good hopefully we can keep that momentum going into to the subsequent years and getting more representation from from that demographic so it's good yeah and first off let's congratulate matt on your first place finish at avid thank you well, yeah i really well appreciate well it <laughs> it was it was tri tricky tricky wednesday uh it was yeah. a headwind twitchy twitchy yeah. headwind which is is the worst kind with with yeah. a comfortable margin i mean like it was basically you and then all of us squished in the middle. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like second place to tenth place. We're all within like three or four points yeah. or something. It was uh, it was definitely tricky. I, I think I mentioned right before we went live that I was kind of surprised that I I won it outright because of the fact that I felt like I was struggling throughout the day and talking to squad mates. We were all trying to figure out the wind. Uh, some stages it was just really, really biting us. And yeah. since it's a headwind and it's switchy, like you might not have to hold off plate, but if you hold on the wrong side of the plate, it's going to blow Correct. you completely off. And yeah. and it was it was switchy enough where it would switch multiple times during a two minute stage. So I remember specifically, uh, Colin was shooting one stage, 
and he every every shot he would look over at the wind flag. <laughs> it would be doing just good, different, and then he'd good. get back on his gun and take the shot. But then it would change again. So he was he was getting pretty frustrated about that. Yeah, I, uh, I think we all experienced it on Saturday. So yeah. we needed that and, full and, two minutes to you know a little extra time to stop and figure out okay what's going yeah. on downrange. Yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was pretty close. Pretty close race for for everybody. You know, second place and under. There was a. Uh, there was like a three or four place tie for 64 points, I think, or something like yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Thomas was one of them. I, I lost yeah. that race to uh, Chris Ward. I think who? I think Chris Ward took fourth. Gregory Jaslin took fifth, and I got sixth. And we all tied at 64. So yeah. it came down to the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah. Who was that third? Uh, it was Pascal. Uh, Pascal. 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 And he Pascal was always there. 70, 69? No, 69, yes. Yeah. Uh, JP Noel got 70 in second place. So it's really tight. Yeah. yeah. No, it's yeah, it it funny. Match. Talking about the win, though, when you had, when you were lucky enough to shoot when it was when it was uh, calm, you would want to try and finish the stage quick before yeah. it picked up again. <laughs> so. so all the semi auto guys were just launching <laughs> rapid fire down range. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good because it was a really good uh, test of your mental management, I, I feel like, because you really had to yeah. pay attention to the wind and everything exactly. else you were doing. I think you guys had a lucky compared to Carl just chimed in. Book was 27 mile an hour, That's 11 crazy. o'clock wind, twitching. Yeah, but it, it was 11 to, to the, like 1 o'clock wind. For, <laughs> it just kept yeah. switching like this. It just kept switching, yeah. 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 I think at Book the, mm-hmm. the high score, Mark andre Pelche came in at 50 points. Ooh, and, yeah, uh, he's, and and these guys are all good shooters, eh? So, to to, to get, I think the the first time I met Mark Andre was that disastrous Val Cartier match, where the winner came in with like eleven or twelve points. Mark <laughs> Mark Andre was there, and he I think he won his division. I think he was in production. So I only I only see Mark when there's terrible wins, terrible terrible shooting conditions. So I feel bad for him. So I know it was good. Yeah, Booktush is great. It's gonna be it's gonna be good for the uh, the two day championships there, even nice. more as well as we're gonna have the two day championships in uh, mid or early July, July actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the weekend. first weekend, second weekend. Yeah, July after Canada Sunday. Day, basically. Yeah, yeah. So that's gonna be that's gonna be good. Yeah, hopefully we can squeeze one more in somewhere. We're looking at it. We have a couple of places in mind. We just need to uh, have a few options. The problem is time. It's not enough yes, weekends time, in the summer. We need more weekends is, in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what we can do. We're going to try and get one in, in, in June, but uh, no guarantees. But it was good. What, what were the uh, what were the challenging stages? I think we had the one-third Ipsic. One third yeah, Ipsic, the, the uh, KOL. Was KOL. Uh, 250. They're all the same target size, which is a third of yeah. six silhouette, but uh, I don't think no one on my squad even attempted the sixth target. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I told I told myself that I would not engage the sixth. If I hit the fifth, I was just going to take that. And and before the stage, I was the first to shoot that stage, I'm pretty sure. So I was spotting uh, the targets just to look how many hits were on each one. And on the very last one, there was maybe maybe half a dozen hits on it, and we were the last yeah. squad to shoot that stage. I was like, "Nope, I am not." Was... I, uh, I I reviewed uh, Matt's video, and I kind of laughed at myself because if you want to see <laughs> mental struggle, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look at the end of that video uh, where I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to take that a shot at that fifth that... target. That uh, is probably my favorite part of the video, watching you decide if you should take that shot or not. <laughs> and you had time? You had lots of time? He had I lots had of 30, time. 30 seconds or so yeah. Uh, okay, to yeah. make my decision. But, but you the could longer see you that? take, you yeah. have to no launch options one. after. And right? you could see Thomas's anxiety kind of build up and build up and build up. And then he takes <laughs> the shot, he, he hits it, and then you can just see like the relief. <laughs> like, but nice. thank goodness I did not actually know because I looking at the scores after, and I shared that with Matt, but if I didn't take that fifth shot, I would drop to, I think, eighth position. So from six oh, to wow. eight. Wow. If I messed it up, I dropped to 13th place. Like basically if I walked away with zero or one or something yeah. like that. <clears throat> and then actually hitting that fifth. 
pushed me up to uh to 64 Six. so it gave yeah. me a sixth place nice. so there was a lot on the line for like one <laughs> yeah there was <laughs> yeah one hit <laughs> it, it, it's good not to know sometimes eh? oh yeah it's good not to know sometimes yeah what, what was the most challenging stage there uh i would i personally would say in terms of uh target size was one of the prs skill stages the second yeah. target was really small and yeah, it was hit to one. advance so like if, a four inch if, four inch or at 160 or something uh yeah i think it was that stage yeah and then and then uh so if, if a if a shooter got stuck on that second target they can't advance through the stage so they're only stuck with one or two points because you actually have to engage that target twice in a row yeah yeah yeah, yeah so that was tough it's a skill stage with that being said i thought these were super fun uh it was yes it was clever <clears throat> Yeah. of Travis we, to bring those in. Yeah, we were trying to bring Travis on the call tonight, but he's he's got some homework to do and he couldn't couldn't make it unfortunately. Would have yeah. been good. I think I thought he put together a, a great match. I think everyone was in, in thoroughly enjoying it. Um so the venue, yeah. was, pretty, the venue was pretty awesome. I mean it's yeah. it's, 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 pretty, it's quite quite cool the way they yeah. up there. Yeah. Oh, and Osmir, thank you again for the uh, sandwiches. Yes, that thank, was amazing. You and, your crew, and, and the cupcakes. cupcakes. And the, the <laughs> That's a lifesaver at the end of a match. The, <laughs> the drinks. It was it. It was a lifesaver. I think. I think everyone appreciated. It, so thank you very much. Uh, it was. It was very well received, and I. I enjoyed my fair share. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and 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 um, uh, we need to thank the JPs and mine significant others that that contributed quite a bit um yeah into that so yeah so april and miriam put in quite a bit of work to, to yeah. make that happen as well and it's um, it's nice to see you know it's it's you know it, it's it's really a community when when you see people giving of themselves their time you know it's it's easy to go out and you know go to costco and just get a, a case of whatever random baked goods but uh, when 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 people you know buttercream icing on yeah. that cappuccino cupcake that was oh, that was that was so good. I mean, I was very I low. I was extremely low on caffeine by the time we got to that point of the day. <laughs> yeah, that was good. It was, it was, it was very good. I, I really enjoyed that. It was good seeing all the new gear you had too. Like, well, the CRKT now is my favorite because I'm, I'm a knife guy. So I already picked out my, my next three purchases from, from Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Not and it's good knife, kind of look at it, a picture of a knife and held, holding in, in your hand. It's, it's, you know, yeah. um, you know, I always say with the scope, you have to look through it to kind of get exactly. the feel of it and get to feel the clicks. But you know, you can you can get quite a bit out of specs for the scope, but knife, yeah. you, you just kind of have to yeah, be yeah. tactile. Yeah, some of them were almost self-opening. Others were a little that that mechanical cram, but I couldn't figure out how to use it. Yeah, <laughs> I think I don't have the right size for it. I, I need like a, a child's cram bit if they sell one. <laughs> so that was good. It was good to see it. And I didn't get a chance to try out the the Wiley X glasses. I think I should I should have done that and picked picked one out because you know I need the Asian fit frames because uh, glasses don't. What is Asian fit? I keep seeing that. What is Asian fit? Because because of the facial the the cheekbones are typically higher. Okay. We don't we don't are, have a are, nose bridge either. We don't have a nose bridge, so yeah. So the glasses end up sliding down. So is so, it narrow, narrower on the, on the nose bridge and and the the bottom is a little bit higher. I think so, something like that. Because I've but seen it. A, I've seen it even like even in the Wiley X, like it would say Asian fit. I'm like, boy, is this politically correct? Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean it's like it's like and then so yeah. no, it is because of the facial features yeah. are, are exactly yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Now it's a, it's now, a real thing. It's a real thing. Okay. All right. Okay. No, it's good to know that I didn't know actually know what that was. Because I've seen yeah. it in literature. I just never understood it. I was too shy to ask like what's an Asian fit? I'm like, uh, <laughs> You want the real answer, or you want the jokey answer? Yeah, no, they're just, they're they're just shorter. <laughs> yeah, they're just oh, they're too easy. Yeah, that's good. That's no, good. And then what was so? What was the worst stage there then? I think in terms of challenging, you, you think it was that skill stage, the four inger? Thomas, yeah, uh, I think the one I did worst on was I think it was the, that uh, the two road barricades, or was it the fence? The one we started on. Oh, I the, got two on one. You, the one fence you did pretty good. Yeah, it must have been the other one. But yeah, that didn't go too well. Yeah. Could have been the wind, could have been... I mean, it was an early stage for us, so I feel like it was a bit windier in the morning. 
Yes. Uh, and it calmed down. It you got, you, you got more out. calm periods at the end of the day, at the end of the match. It would have been interesting to see that KYL turn into a find your limit where you've got to go two hits to move and then see how far you can go. Oh, that's that would interesting. Have, that, would have been, yeah. that would have been cool to find out how far people could go. Because all we're trying to do is if everyone makes it, if a lot of people make it to the sixth one, we just push it further out. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So it'd be interesting. The first, so Russ here just commented the first stage of the day was the worst for everyone, regardless of which stage you started <laughs> on. Uh, well, not for me because I cleaned the first stage of the day. Well, there you go. So that, that you started off well. You, you, you came in yeah. like, a, like a wrecking ball there. Yeah, I started off really well and I, I started dropping points from the wind after that. So I guess maybe my first stage was when it was calm. Like it, I got kind of lucky, I guess. But I don't like no, I don't like shooting off a a, a, um, a rope. The rope on the tank trap always oh, yeah. uh, gets me. Wonder why. So what you should what what should you practice more of, Matt? Um, prone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, prone and the offhand stage. The offhand stage too was was a uh, tough. It was when I when I read the course of fire the day before. I was like, hmm. I wonder if I should bring my CZ instead because there's an offhand <laughs> stage. <laughs> gamers yeah you did all right on it though didn't you finish uh, I, 10 9 the, 9 10 something like that it was a 12 round stage and i dropped three so i got nine <laughs> but the funny part is i actually got all my all the hits in the standing position i, I was able to make that nice. it was i was in the easier positions that i started screwing up but my arm was so tired after those two minutes so <laughs> it's one of the yeah. reasons why i haven't added any weights to uh, my CZ uh, even after putting it in the ACC. Yeah. I just I tried once. Uh, I think uh, Tony gave me his weights because he wasn't using it. I don't think it's necessary. So, but then again, I don't finish top. So, yeah, I think it it it's it's cool on the barricaded stages. Everywhere else, it kind of you know. Yeah, my so. voodoo my voodoo doesn't have weights in the chassis, but it does have the tuna can at the end of it, which is like a pound or something. And and it's a heavy profile barrel, especially compared to the CZ. So right now it comes in at I think eighteen and a half pounds. Oh, it's so a it is it, it, it's uh it's not as heavy as Pascal's uh yeah, <laughs> ultimatum. You're not maxed out. Yeah, like I shot Pascal's rifle, it's pretty heavy. It's, it's like, a, like a like a little little fifty cal. It's like, a cinder, it's like a cinder block. <laughs> Does anyone know the the weight of that? Is it over I think 22 it's pounds? Twenty four pounds, I think. Yeah, he's he's Something close like that. to twenty five. That's, so that's 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 sumo class. Yeah. Sumo class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there's lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, and sumo class. He's definitely in the sumo class. Is there, is there any rules against taking? Or, or sorry, is there any rules around uh, taking the weights during the match or taking no. them off during the match? No. Nope. Oh, I think if anything, clip on weights. Uh, I I don't know of any like super fast uh, weight system where you you don't need uh, external tools to remove, but kind of like a twist and twist lock. Yeah, and lock twist little maybe. Project for that because I use the uh, Kev Fat bag a lot, um, yeah. and I have a quarter inch steel plate cut for it. I just oh, haven't okay. tried it yet. So interesting. <clears throat> That's weight that I can remove very quickly because it's attached to the archive. Yeah. So, so I think we'll, we'll be trying year, that at some point. This year, I'm I'm torn between. So we just received the uh, Savage B22 Precision Light version. So that's the carbon barreled one. We just got it a couple of days ago. I'm debating whether I shoot this season with that and uh, Athlon Cronus nice. or the uh, CZ457 Synthetic with the with the Arkan SH4. That's a super nice scope from uh, Go scope. Big Tactical. Very, it, uh, it, very it takes all. It's it's like a. I don't want to use this. I'm going to call it the baby apex, baby ri- rival. <laughs> like it's it kind of feels the same way in terms of specking and and you know if I was gonna if I would imagine if Vanya was gonna build something like that, that's what he would end up building. Right. Arkin uh, Arkin actually has a new model as well. They have the SH4, but they also now have the EP5, which I don't know it's in Canada yet, but it's a. Uh, I think it's like a slightly improved version of the SH4. Oh, yeah. yeah. More bells and whistles. Yeah, but it's still it's still under the production price limit, I believe, because it only comes in at like 
five sixty USD or something. Yeah, I think it was six ninety nine or five ninety. I was I was researching. Oh, was it okay? Yeah, but it's still yeah, under the seven hundred mark. That, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool because that's that's Venom territory and it's not really challenged by anything else. Yeah. So the EP just has uh, Japanese and, and glass. Avalon. Japanese glass and ten mils per revolution as opposed to eight. Oh, okay. So yeah. I mean, between the two, I think it's worth the uh, price jump, in yeah. my opinion, because yeah. it's only like a hundred bucks the price jump. Yeah. Is it still production class? Yep, because I think our limit is seven hundred US. Yeah, seven hundred US. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, but the SH four works. I mean, for guys just getting into it, the 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 glass difference. I mean, because we already looked at it, we had guys comparing. We had we had the demo version on the line, and we had people comparing it to what they were shooting, and you know, it was as good, sometimes better than what they had in open division. So. It's uh, it's pretty compelling. So, oh, sorry. Just speaking of glass quality, it didn't really matter on the, the day of the match for me anyway because there was so much mirage. Everything oh, there just was. Like, yeah. yeah, everything looked like you were looking through a swimming pool because like yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter how nice your scope is. All you see is yeah. like all these heat waves and yeah. And it started yeah. early, like right yeah. from the start. We yeah. had mirage. I, I've I've never seen mirage that bad ever. Yeah, it was the worst mirage day I'd ever seen. And it was funny because one stage I remember I was taking my time because it was it was an eight round stage and I wasn't rushed out. So I was adjusting my parallax. I was like, is my parallax broken? It's never in focus. I was like, oh, it's the mirage. <laughs> like it's just it's never gonna be in focus. So you know. <laughs> it was it was it was good. It was it was a nice day. It's a little just a little cool if I was being a little picky. A little cool and a little <laughs> some windy. guys on our squad got a got a sunburn. I know. From, uh, I'm still feeling a little burn. bit on the ears here. Really? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've already got uh, my protective layer of, of tan. <laughs> I was celebrating this. To me, this was the first match without gloves this year. Yes, so, I know because because no, your season because your season doesn't stop. No, for some guys, this was their first first match of these of the year. I, I guess a lot of these guys shot the NRS match the prior. A couple did, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That was surprisingly cold. Yes. That was a Palmerston? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Nice. Super windy, but very constant. So that, that was a lot easier in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> did they have targets all the way around? Like uh, yes. Well, it runs? switched direction, but the f- magnitude of it was pretty pretty consistent. Nice. You just had to keep track of where that building is because it could if well yeah you've shot there before like as you go around right. the the, the right. garage or the barn there uh the it's wind the felt like it was going completely yeah. opposite to what was oh, really? actually happening down down range oh yeah nice nice so is the next crps in ontario at east elgin then yeah at the okay. end of like last uh two weekends yeah it's not too far the from 21st that. yeah it's like three weeks from now yeah Nice. Weeks. Okay. And yeah. and East Elgin, uh, just logistically, is it shoot five stages, reset, and then shoot another five yes, stages? Yes, that's okay. the plan. And we have cool. big squads. I think we've got over 70 shooters at wow. East Elgin. And that's consistent with the last time we shot at East Elgin. We had like, I think we had 80 shooters that time. So it'll be, it'll be, it'll be tight. It'll be tight. And, uh, yeah, Chris Tischler is is uh, the guest MD for for that. Oh, nice. So okay, it's gonna be. He's bringing. He's working on. He's been sending me pictures of various props and ideas. I don't know how much of it are, is gonna make the match, but it's gonna be hellacious. If, if his, his targets are always fun. His targets and his props. He's he's up in the prop game. <laughs> I think I saw a Trojan horse. In, in, among the, among the yeah, photos. Well, you have so, to shoot out the butt of it. I, I, I have no idea. It could be front to back. You got to spin the horse around, shoot through the mouth. I don't know. You'll show That's up with a nice. mechanical I, bull one of these days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I I can't remember the context of, of how it was going to be used, but it was it was in there. So I've just got to confirm with him on that. So yeah, it's going to be half and half, and then we have the X twenty two the day after. So that'll be that'll be good for some. I'm so looking forward to catch up on that one. Yeah, I missed the one in my own backyard. So. I know. <laughs> That's all right. I'll make up. For There'll it. be others, and then, yeah, and then after that, it's going to be again. We have that lull in June, 
and then uh, the two-day Eastern. So we'll have three three full matches if we don't get that that next one. So uh, no, it's a the link should be. Someone's asking a question about the 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 fundraiser. The fundraiser is still active. I think we're about. Uh, just a bit over half the tickets sold, so there's still lots of time to get into it. I'm about to announce it on our mailing list, so if folks are... So this is for the uh, fundraiser for the CZ457, courtesy of Tesro, and the Arkin SH4 Precision Optics Package, courtesy of Go Big Tactical, and 900 rounds of Ely... I think it was Contact. Contact, Contact. Yeah. 900 rounds of Ely Contact. So uh, fundraiser tickets are available on the rimfireprecision.ca website. Might as well call it Ely Unicorn. Ely <laughs> Unicorn? That's how hard it is to get these days. So. Lot, wait, lot wait, test, wait. Not tested Headache. by Asmir himself? Or... <laughs> yeah, hand tested. Yeah. So this is, uh, I believe it's a good batch. This is the same batch that, uh, I can't remember if John, John Gingrich was shooting contact or action. I think it was contact. I know Pascal tested some of the lots that we had, and he had yeah. some good results with it. Yeah, and that, this is I guess this so. is part of the same uh, same batch, same <laughs> lot. Uh, there's a hundred tickets total, Jeff. So hundred tickets. It's and a then, production uh, package, right? Production package. It's it's the perfect production package. I think, unless you like ticket to one X's. Use shooter at home. That's a pretty light package yeah. to shoot with it's too. it's I, every time i pick it up it's perfectly balanced uh it's i mean the only thing you'd missing would be maybe put a arc array arc rail on it just to make it more more useful so but but out of the box it, it works pretty good regular sling stud mounted uh bipod would would be perfect so that's a good shooter yeah we were getting first round hits at 317 on that day we're just people just come up and just ring steel with it so that's pretty good yeah what else and then after that we're gonna have um an athlon precision optics package uh athlon has jumped on board as a platinum sponsor for the 2022 season and uh they'll have they'll be joining asmir for uh we'll have one one Athlon product on the monthly prize draws for ORPS also, which is nice. Sweet. So, yeah. So, and then we've got a whole bunch of, of demo items at, for the Discovery Days and the Rimfire Competition Academy. So, we'll have the full gamut of range finders, binos, spotting scopes, um, what else, red dot sights, and probably the full range of, of Athlon optics there. And I, I sent you guys the photo of the the one to ten arrays. The teasers, yeah. The teasers, <clears throat> saw yeah, that. The one to, yeah, and their tripods are are pretty good value for the money. for For five hundred fifty bucks, it's got. I'm fully accessorized. That's the that's only the thing it's missing is a tack table or a, or a, a range finder, a, a spotting scope plate. I don't think there's anything else. It's got the it's got the little hammock and the sling and the sling and the and the shoulder pads. Mm. So it's pretty good. So we'll look for those at the at the uh, CRPS events and all the other CR, uh, all the other events we have across Canada. So that'll be good. What else is there? Yeah, so it was, it was a pretty uh, pretty good day. I think everyone generally had had a good time except for the twitchy wins. That was the only real. It's part of the game, really. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, think we, I think everyone had a pretty good time. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Was good. We wrapped up. Pretty much on time around four ish, three thirty, yeah. I think. Yeah. Which is always I cool. think we were all out of there by like five after the yeah. ceremony and everything. So pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, no, Travis did a great job. He had a, a few volunteers come out the the weekend before to set up, which you know, you never want to be setting up day of if you can avoid it. But sometimes yeah. you can't. Little sometimes kudos to up. uh Benjamin Pinel and um, Brandon Watkins for that. Okay. I know those yeah. are two of the guys that uh, were there the weekend before. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure who, who that was there, but setting all this up yeah. so we would have a good day. So yeah, Brendan took home a, a medal, didn't he? Yep. Yes. Place production. And I heard he was 
having some trouble through the day too. So. <laughs> he was he was struggling with a savage mark too. Time to yeah. get here. Asmio's got some CZs coming. Time to, I, uh, time so to I get him into a CZ. Him. I talked to um, I talked to Brandon after the match, and I was teasing him. I was like, "Hey, you know, is it time to upgrade your uh, little alligator gun there? Because his stock know. has like this weird scale pattern." On it. <laughs> and he's like, uh, it's the "Crocodile Dundee rifle." Yeah, that's, that's like, a Troy Landry edition. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a collector's yeah, item. Just shoot I him. I might, I might try and replace the extractors and give it a second life. So he really likes. He's attached to that savage. Yeah, it's, all, it's all good. Well, it's doing well. I mean, yeah, didn't, exactly. Didn't Pascal run a savage mark too? Yep. In production, yep, the and he did very is, well with that thing. It's the winningest rifle in production. CRPS. And before yeah. that, I believe Steve Steve Bark took uh, probably the first season overall, maybe yeah. the second CRPS yeah, the, season. The Mark yeah, yeah, but now now we've opened up production to the CZs and the Tikas. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's almost double the price of that rifle. Well, watch. So. Uh, He's listening, Russ Rodriguez, with his uh, what model is that shorty he's got there? The it's Pro the, Varmint, uh, maybe. Yeah, Pro Varmint, yeah. But I yeah. think his is the. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's the MTR version. I think it's no, it's yeah, just a regular the normal version. Yeah, because yeah. MTR wouldn't qualify as uh, correct. Yeah, yeah, Pro Varmint, exactly. Pro, yeah, Pro Varmint comes with. Uh, I can shed some light on it because we, <laughs> we spent some time setting help, uh, helping him to set up with that. Um, so Pro Varmint has. What used to be CZ's top, top, uh, um, top of the line barrel. So it's the varmint kind of cylinder, the cylindrical profile, uh, before the MTR came out. And MTR is basically the same dimensions. They just did a little bit more work on it to accurize it. So, but in terms of the the weight and dimensions, it's it's uh, pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, and it meets the production cutoff. I think that's yeah. the, I think that's the kind of most expensive rifle you can get. Yeah. Or kind of. The, the most decked out setup you yeah. can get for production. Yeah, but, but I don't think you need to spend that much to, to be competitive in production, obviously. I mean, you can, you I can feel like that rifle completely. would be competitive and open period. It's yeah. Pretty nice. Little rifle. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a shot with the synthetic pencil barrel C four, five, seven with the arc and, and then flip flop between that and the B 22 with the, with a carbon barrel. Yeah. Until the voodoo 360 comes in. <laughs> I thought you had one of those already. Three, we don't have a three sixty yet. It's okay. it's on its way. Which one is the one way. with that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a, that it's, a, it's the it's a, a regular barrel. regular V two. That's my favorite profile right now. That well, that wrought talk iron about twisted. A, talk about a rifle that's too heavy. Whew. <laughs> that, that one, monster that one has weights. That one has no. weights in the ACC. Yeah, yeah it's on fully, top it's of fully, a massive barrel. It's fully balanced. It's fully, it's perfect though on a barricade. It's like you don't have to do anything to it. Yeah, anybody who tries it loves it until they go to pick it up <laughs> <laughs> and they say no, thank you. It's a good prone gun, right? It's, it's it's a good it's a good everything gun. Like I, I'll shoot it standing. You just just gotta practice with it. With a sling, a sling ends up taming it a lot. In terms of the, the, the weight, the so. with that thing is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's only two minutes out of the whole day, so it's it's not <laughs> the end of the world. I got to practice oh, with it so I don't suck with it for the first match. There was a there were two stages with support side shooting. That was another thing some guys were struggling with for sure. Using your yeah, using your weak I, side because it's not something without with, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and Bryson says just hit the dang Jimmy and innies. Very true. <laughs> Kareem wants a. It's gonna just. He's gonna. You're gonna bring a caddy, Kareem. Yeah. Oh, Carl. Carl's asking about the the new truck. The new truck is awesome. It's the most comfortable way to tow a seven by twelve trailer. It's like it was perfect. It was a lot of luxury. Yeah. For those that don't know, I traded. I I upgraded my 2005 Dodge Dakota for a 2005 Dodge Ram with a 5.7 Emmy. So that's what Carl's mentioning, and it's so much better. The old red truck. The old red truck is no more. It's it's been sold to a couple of young guys starting a business. <laughs> so it's pretty good. Yeah, everyone should have caddies, just like the PGA, at Augusta. There was quite a few caddies at the match that day. Yeah. At least at least four or five, I would say. One of them was mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you have the. 
camera gear excuse. So yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> Dory carries all the camera gear. <laughs> no one needs to know that, Rick. <laughs> Who's really the filmmaker, I guess? That's the question. Yeah. We know who edits the film. Yeah. Well, the footage. That was good. Yeah. That was a good day. I, I enjoyed it. Everyone seemed to, to have a great time. Everyone seemed I don't think anybody was frustrated or upset. More than more than normal. So and it's and there's so much room in that. You could easily have put an extra couple of stages in there. Yeah. Could have gone to twelve. No nobody uh suffered heat stroke like the last match we had oh, and even more. No. Yeah. Jeez, that was bad. That's the worst that's literally the worst that ever experienced shooting a match. I, I say that he, every time. I wonder if Travis could set up a couple of stages facing the other way. So basically where our back was, because there's another field behind there. Yeah. But I don't I'm not know. sure. I know he's I know he's planning to use the uh the hilltop that we yeah. used last time. That was actually uh, a fun stage. That was yeah. they, they had corn planted there last time, right? Uh I think it was I don't corn. Know, something green and relatively yeah. tall. Imagine you're just eating corn and you bite into like a piece of lead because people are <laughs> shooting bullets through it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> true, true. I, we don't think about those things. Uh, we, don't, we don't talk about that. Well, I guess they're never happy because you hit the target, the bullet just disintegrates. But you know, well, those those, uh, those those pieces go places, you know. They, yeah, uh, but it's it, the the corn's protected by the the husk, right? So uh, it's, right. it's fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's like that's like those green beans in Warren Field. <laughs> oh man outlaw shooters april which match quite a that? few and we have at least one more match stitzville shooting april uh oh shoot is that next weekend not no, not 14th. this weekend mother's day yeah, but the one after 14 yeah. probably probably i'd say more than last month i think there's a couple of ranges that just jumped on board for this month, right? I think so. I, so I haven't Stitz, ran all the stats yet. Stittsville is actually going to be shooting the April Course of Fire in May, and then we're doing a double header in May because uh, we missed April, which works for me because on the 14th, I can't make it. I'm going to a buddy's wedding, <laughs> so I'm happy about that. <laughs> I tried to take everybody's schedule into uh, into account, yeah. but yeah, there's... Oh, when is it? May, the May is when Tight the on uh, weekends. count. Is it on the, it's on the 14th? Yeah. Tom? Or RPS, yeah. I wonder. And then I've we'll got, have I'm, a little long range thing after. I gotta work. I gotta work that weekend. Yeah. Dang it. Would have been to come up. Yeah. Always welcome. Hey Bryson, what is your 457 weigh these days? First oh, time by I the saw. Way, Bryson. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bryson is joining Go Big Tactical team. Oh so, really? Yeah. Congrats to him. Nice. He's all right. <laughs> he's he's got he's got a CRPS match running this weekend at yeah, uh, right. Kamloops. He's got oh, uh, I think he's got thirty six shooters there. It's, it's gonna be a big Pretty match. Good. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice it's a nice range. You guys have to get out there one day. So I actually uh, asked Dory if she would like to travel for a match and like make a yeah. little vacation out of it or something. Sounds sounds like a it's an easy sell. I just have to pick which match to go to basically. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's the two day Heffley Creek Western championships. Yeah. Or it, the, basically or the... we want to decide if we want to do Atlantic, like, you know, eat some lobster or oh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead to the West side yeah. and or maybe September. see some family. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Healthy Creek. That'd be two fun. Day. Uh, that's in July and two day Atlantic is in September. And then there's September the September is a busy month for matches. Nationals already. in August. Okay. The thing about that is that there's X22 Sniper Series, uh, King of 0.22 Miles, and yeah. the CRPS Nationals. That's uh, that's in Saskatoon, though, correct? Or Saskatchewan? Saskatchewan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, Saskatoon. That's the, nice. that's the only downside for people who want to see the West Coast. Saskatoon is not <laughs> <Yeah>. BC. Exactly. <laughs> it's a little well, bit different. It's, it's a little wise. bit. You know, we can we can <laughs> we could uh, you know provide all of the you know if you get up to a hill really close, it look like a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't remember. Fast. I, I've been to Saskatchewan once, but I was very young, so I don't even remember it at all. It, you know. It's, Go back and say hi to all yeah. the cornfields. I guess <laughs> it's it's nice. I like I like 
I love I love driving through there. It's it's beautiful countryside. People are super friendly. You get you can visit uh, Ben at Extreme Range Outfitters. Oh, again. is that what they are? I didn't know that. Okay, nice. yes, yeah, Saskatoon. Yeah, they keep they keep moving into bigger and bigger digs. So, <laughs> where's Wolf yeah? But Heffley Heffley would be good because then you'd you'd see all the left coast shooters. Maybe Ryan Stacy would be there too. Certainly, Ooh, all of yeah, that. that'd be cool. The, yeah, yeah. But certainly, all the all of the, uh, the the West Coast guys will be there. Pretty exciting news. Uh, was it this week coming out of Ryan? The uh, yeah. ultimatum, Ult- ultimatum precision takeover. Yes. That's very good. cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, I find that very very exciting. <laughs> I was, we'll I was a little bit. I was a little bit worried for a little bit because uh, oh, their website just said we're not taking orders or something. Yeah, and I was like, ooh, good. yeah, it didn't look good. But then the announcement was like, oh, okay, well, this is awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. When was that announcement made? On the weekend? Or before that? I can't remember. I think it was, it was, it was last week. Before that, yeah. 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 But it was very cool. Yeah, no, that's good. It's good, dudes. It, it makes sense, too. I mean, you think about it. Like, MDT, Ultimatum, and IBI are all there. Yeah. Right? The only thing missing is Trigger Tech and an Optics Maker. Well, now there's an Optics Maker, right? Yeah. Well, no, but I'm saying in, in, in Chilliwack. Oh, in Chilliwack. Okay, I see. Yeah, in yeah. Chilliwack. Yeah. Speaking of MDT, that May the 4th video was probably the funniest thing I've watched in a while. <laughs> that was good. They, they're I killing it, those guys. Yeah. They are churning out some great know. content. Yeah. No, it's what, a, good. what a terrible job they have. <laughs> yeah, seriously, can you imagine? You get paid I'm, to make that video. Can we cook bacon on a barrel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm reevaluating my life. Stormtrooper <laughs> and shooting. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's genius. Genius, genius. Nova Scotia. Carl's inviting you over to Nova Scotia this summer. I love Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is yeah. like one of my favorite places to visit. I've only been there a couple of times, but like the food's great. Like it's nice and touristy yeah. if you want to take pictures and stuff. Yeah, that's a that's a strong contender, and it's within driving distance too, that's right? So. The home of Tangentata. Yeah. Home of Tangentata. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's, true. that's a good point. Very good point, Tom. <laughs> Just saying. Perfect. Hey, Asmir, do you know anything about eyewear? Eyepro? A <laughs> little bit. That, that's on one of our topics. We were going to talk cleaning and, and eye pro. I noticed, I, I, that I, at least on my screen, the right side, which is Matt and I, I have yeah. the, the bespectacled guys. And then on the left yeah. side, the guys with the perfect specimen with the, they don't require that. Oh, <laughs> Thomas oh. has some glasses. <laughs> oh, I, I, I need glasses. I just don't have an updated prescription. <laughs> I just don't <laughs> wear them that often. I had cataract surgery, so one eye is completely okay. Uh, one okay. is still wonky, so I, don't, I, don't, I haven't updated my glasses since the pandemic. Like, it, like the the appointment wait times were like nine to twelve months for my op- optometrist. Wow. Okay. I, it's crazy. The machine does all the work. I don't know what. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So my so what I wear, I wear the loophole. Two, two of the loophole sunglasses models fit me, and two, two of them don't. So two are Asian fit, arguably Asian fit, I guess. Oh, they're not labeled Asian fit. They just they're fit. not labeled. Yeah, yeah, they just fit. <laughs> okay, they just fit this Asian. <laughs> okay, loophole glasses are nice because we, we got we got the prize packs here, and and, yeah. and of course I I open them up and inspect them. They're they're quite they're, they're well made and uh, they're 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 quite they're quite nice. I mean, um, they're um. I don't know who's making them for Leopold. I don't think they make them in Leopold because no. Leopold's not glasses manufacturer, but they're they're good. They're good quality yeah. and like overall, not not your gas station kind of. Uh, yeah, pair they're of the sun. nicest. They're the nicest pairs I own. Yeah, it, and yeah. Uh, they look pretty yeah, darn cool too. Yeah. Thanks, Thomas. But not on me, but other people wear them. Like when Asmir wears them, they they look really cool. So, um, okay, so. Um, I wanted to spend some time talking about the division, um, the, the eye kind of vision, um, uh, and how is it, what, what, what kind of aspects of it are important for shooting and shooting sports. So, um, you know, there's old saying kind of saying that, you know, if you can't see it, you can't hit it. Um, but I think there's a lot more to it than just that. It's not about, you know, whether your scope is, uh, 
or your iron sights if you're shooting with iron sights whether they're you know they're zoomed in and 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 all of that i think there's a lot more to it uh to vision that that's then just the simple whether you're you're zoomed in and uh, or focused and all of that and i think a lot of that has to do with the uh, you know with our complex um instrument that sits in our in front of our head which is our with which is our eyes um and uh, um so a couple of things that that some people might or might not know um, that eyes are one of the first things that's affected by fatigue and low blood sugar level um, vision is is quite tied to that um, so the um, so if you like you know how we say that oh I was so tired my, my vision was getting blurry so that's you know you hear that often and you know that's that's where that's coming from um, so there's there's a lot to kind of eye care that that starts even before you you, you start talking about corrective lenses and and all and all that which is um, essentially making sure you're well hydrated making sure your blood sugar level is is right um, and uh, that you're well rested um, and uh, and kind of those those th th basically that your body is is in balance and that will quite correlate quite positively. Uh, towards having a good vision you know how you like when you guys you say oh i'm like my vision is getting blurred i'm tired like you hear about often about that and that's that's kind of also your body's way of telling you that you should stop doing what you're doing because you can't see well yeah. um and um but important thing for shooters is that uh well you know if your vision is not not quite good or if you can't spot things and you can't see them all it's much harder to shoot shoot things um and um but uh, um, the other kind of interesting things that happen there, if if uh, if you're having a hard time seeing things, um, there's some interesting phenomena that happen that your brain does for you that we don't realize. Uh, um, for example, if you're looking through a scope or you're through sights and you know what the picture is supposed to be, um, but that's not what your eyes seeing. Your brain will superimpose the picture that you're supposed to see. Nice. And let me give an example. If you're looking at um, I don't know if you guys can see my card here, but let's say you're looking at at uh, at, at this uh, this target here, and it's supposed to be round, right? You know it's kind of round, but you know, for some reason, if you have it, let's say you have astigmatism or anything like that, or, or scope is not set up right, it's not round. Your brain will make it round. It will appear round because your brain, you know, from 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 uh, from the past that uh, you're looking at the round target. Now that's all nice and great. The problem is then that affects the accuracy of your aiming, and it's extremely tiring on on your brain. So um, I discovered this personally um, through because uh, I have I have astigmatism, um, and then shooting with iron sights. There, they you know you you're looking through a small um, small peephole kind of peep uh, uh, style sights. I was shooting without my glasses because I could I didn't have a right setup. And I would get these massive headaches after shooting. And I thought it was air and all of that. And it comes out, it was just, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't shooting corrective lenses. And, and um, um, I was just getting tired and I was just getting these massive headaches. So I almost gave up on shooting. I'm like, well, shooting gives me headaches. Obviously not good for me. I'll go, I'll go home, play video games or whatever, do something else. Um, so it's very important that, that uh, we, we, um, we take care of, of kind of the, the, do kind of a little bit of housekeeping when it comes to, to vision. Um, now, um, there is, uh, there's two aspects kind of to eye care. There's one, one is just eye protection. So making sure, making sure that we keep our eyes healthy. So, you know, no foreign objects, you know, like dust and all that, 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 uh, that can cause inflammation and, and infections and all that. But, you know, I think we all know that don't touch your, uh, um, eyes with dirty hands. And, and, um, if you're shooting out in the dusty, Dusty kind of uh, conditions try to kind of prevent dust getting into your eyes um, and, and things like that. But uh, the big one that I think a lot of people are not aware of it is the just the UV damage that it does to that that um, um, and just the sunlight how damaging and how how hard it is on the eyes, especially for shooters. Um, so the eye will try to protect itself. So you know the the opening will will close. Um, is there's too much light. So if you're shooting a bright day, um, the iris will try to close because there's too much light there. But as it closes, it, because less light is coming in, it's harder for you to see what you're seeing, what you want to see. So when looking through a scope, it's basically there's a lot less of that light that's coming through the scope, which has already reduced the amount of light. 
So it's going to be harder for you to see. So think of it essentially that even though it's a bright day, you're looking at it, it you know, and it's like, oh, the picture is cloudy. It's just because um, because of the ambient light, your eyes are going to, going to close and it's going to tighten up. And when you look through the scope, which has already reduced the amount of light coming through, that makes it, it makes it even harder to, to see the target. So there's a couple of things to do with that one. And that's obviously some sort of a, a protective something to protect from a direct sun and, and the ambient amount of light that's coming in, um, either some sort of a shade. Um, so, you know, ball cap works quite well or some sort of a hat, um, sunglasses, good, good pair of, of sunglasses, um, or even eye patches. Um, if you're shooting, uh, let's say you're shooting just with the regular, um, regular glasses and, and just put a opaque, opaque, um, cover over your non, non shooting eye. Here's something a lot of people don't know. Uh, your eyes are work in stereo in unison all the time. So if you shine light on your left eye, uh, both irises are going to close up. So if you're looking through the scope and you shine the light in your right eye and you shine the light on your left eye, the both irises are going to close. So that's really? why you, you will, you, if you see, um, uh, if you watch a lot of pistol shooters or shotgun shooters, they will have the non-aiming eye covered. And that's, that's the reason for that. Huh. Now, for rifle uh, shooting, it's a little bit tricky because if there's wind flags that you want to spot, or if there's uh, if you want to look at them, um, you know, see how much mirage, or if basically you want to spot the wind, if your aiming eye is behind the sight, it becomes a little bit harder to spot that. So you need to kind of play around um, with with the setup. Like you know, can you can you maybe have a little slot where you can still see the the grass or the branches or the wind flag or whatever you need to see without having your eye bombarded by the uh, by the ambient light um, and vice versa uh, you want you, you want your kind of aiming eye to 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 be able to uh, kind of look through whatever your aiming device is whether it's a you know, red dot or, or or scope or iron sights or open sights whatever whatever it is so it, it's uh, um, it's quite important to to keep in mind that the eyes are connected so not one eye we're not like chameleon where each eye is kind of unless you look the cross eye like I am um uh, but the eyes in terms of the lights they behave they behave uh, um in uh, in a synchronous way so each um e uh, both of the eyes will kind of react together to uh to the light conditions so is, is the goal then to get the the least amount of tint that gives you the most amount of <clears throat> dilated irises to let the so maximum maximum light in yeah, so, so, so you want your aiming eye to be used to the picture that you're looking at, right? Right. You're, you're looking through the scope, um, and even with uh, whatever the magnification you're using, I mean, everybody's using, you know, at least, let's say, four or six power. Um, and with all the coding, um, even with the high-end scope, you're not getting 100% of the picture right. that's coming through that. You know, so that, you know, 50 or 56 millimeter two that's coming in, it's coming through all the prisms and all, all everything that's coming through is a reduced amount of light. So, um, and this is why, why um, there's another tidbit of information here, which is, this is why kind of the, the, the lot of uh, scope manufacturers will talk about the amount of light transmission. So right. we we'll say 90 X percent of the light transmission. That basically means that how much of the light that comes to the scope is hitting your eye as opposed to what's filtered out, but it's still, that's what you want your eye to be, uh, accustomed to that's the that's what you uh, what you want your eye to be tuned for not for what's happening around it and so and and in general the the um, um it will close up quicker than open up that's just the protective mechanism that our right. eyes have so once the light hits it um it will take it will take a while for it to open up um again so, about two minutes, about this, like the time it takes to shoot a stage. Yeah, so so you kind of want to be you want to be want to be careful with that. And uh, interesting. Um, on the same same token, if you if you're looking in, I mean, shooting on steel targets, it, it's less likely to happen. But if you do experience burning, um, so that you're looking at um, when you shoot iron 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 sights and, and bullseye target burning will happen because it's a, it's the same sight picture yeah, yeah. the time. So with steel, it's it's not likely to happen. But if it does happen, the good remedy is to kind of look at something that's uh, medium or far distance and relatively right. dark, and that will kind okay. of reduce that 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 burning. That's a that's and it's, it would also it's a uh, it will exercise the eye muscles 
to to, um, to change the focus because uh, cool. as, especially as we get older the um the muscles in the eye kind of get a little bit lazier and lazier and that's why we need to go through fancy surgeries and and that's why we have to get bifocals i just hit that mid-40s thing where I, you know it's hard to i can't read the back with the label so my, my luckily my kids are just learning to read so there you're seeing my kids yeah um, has good. this expired um um so 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 those are the kind of things to keep in mind in terms of protecting your eyes um yeah. now it's the same thing as, as you know for shooting same thing applies for driving right you want to have you want to have that amount of constant light i mean everybody's experienced driving driving you know into the sunset as as uh, as romantic as it sounds it's extremely unpleasant um, <laughs> for eyes um and uh or driving at night driving in the rain kind of thing yeah. where where there's not enough light but you have bright lights at you so your eyes yeah. are trying to compensate by closing down but yet you're trying to follow the follow the the, the traffic um so um you know it's, it's, those are all important things to, to keep in mind and once you understand it uh, then it's easier to um to figure out what kind of works best for your your eyes nice. um so how and, do we how do we how do we test sunglasses then i mean because we, we we put them on and we look around and say oh these look nice yeah, but should you get behind the optic and see what it looks like through the optic and also your non-optic eyeball as well to see if there's like that's what yeah, I so, want to know is how do I so, how do I how do I game this to my advantage? Yeah, so there there are a couple of things to do there. So when it comes to getting eyewear, there's sort of a um, three things that the that the glasses will do, right? Um, one thing is tinting, so that's the filtering certain color of light right okay. so that would be you know yellow green gray and, and anything in between in terms of the the pink red what you know every, every all the hues are kind of available so that's kind of filtering certain spectrum of light that's one thing right. the other one is polarization and we'll talk about polarization later and then it's uh, basically a uh, uh, um, correction um whatever your your uh, vision impairment is so whether you're nearsighted farsighted right. uh astigmatic then it's kind of putting the that correcting that uh, um uh, that so those are the kind of three primary things that the that the glasses will do um of course there's a um you know glasses and you know shades are kind of one of the first things you spot on people so there's aesthetic aspect of it so important to have a significant other um yeah. look at them as well um that's that's one of my primary things for me to choose glasses of course but um but also uh, there is the shape of the glasses are important you know as the you know as cool as the ma- little thin matrix glasses are um they have a very little surface area maybe well they might be asian fit because they have a, they're fairly high but um but they're they don't That's have racist a, yeah actually it's funny it's funny you mention that because a big reason why i like wearing my sunglasses when i shoot they're prescription sunglasses my eyes are like pretty bad it's because they they have big lenses and when you're looking through a scope and you're looking upwards my my glasses generally I have to push them up all the time, which is really annoying. So my, my sunglasses are nice and big, so I don't have to mess with my glasses as much when I'm <laughs> shooting. So yeah. if it's if it's even just a little bit sunny, I can have the excuse of putting my shades on. I'll, I prefer yeah. to shoot with those. Yeah. And yeah. So and I mean just to, to kind of uh, unfortunately it's not a simple answer to uh, to Rick. There there's so there's a number of things to do. So uh, you kind of need to see um, when you're. Um, so let's talk about just the corrective. So, you know, if you need to wear a corrective eyewear. So if you're, um, and I think the worst one for shooting is be, having astigmatism because the circle, and this is what I'm talking about, the circle is not a circle that you see. Yeah. Nearsighted and farsighted is, uh, can be compensated by adjustment on your scope, but astigmatism cannot be corrected by a scope unless you, you know, put a lens on, on, on in your scope to, uh, to, uh, to correct astigmatism, which I suppose is possible. Um, and um, so, if you're he- heavily astigmatic, it's very, very difficult to do anything other than re- uh, shoot with the corrective lenses, but just because you're not seeing the shape that you're seeing is not the shape that uh, you want to see, um, and that that's gonna that's just gonna make it very, very difficult and tiring to shoot. So now, in, in that case, um, the primary thing would be to, to somehow figure out whatever the the, the your vision impairment is um, at that point. Um, yeah. And that would be either through through some sort of a you know just regular eyewear um, yeah. that, that you can wear or um, or um, uh, um, contact lenses, um, and um, so that would be kind of like a, your first first thing to decide. Now, you need to kind of judge for yourself how how good or bad your eyes are. If you need 
do it that correct those corrective uh, lenses um, in order to shoot effectively in order to, to acquire your, and, and and see your targets effectively and everybody's a little bit different um so that's something that you kind of have to manually test for that's yourself right. Interesting. Um, and uh for those guys that wear uh, um uh, contact lenses contact lenses are great um but they have also very high risk because once something gets in your eye and if the dust gets under and if the contact lenses pops out you kind of done yeah. um and and uh, um so um in some shooting disciplines the guys will never wear contact lenses just for that reason um that uh there's just too much risk because one, okay. it's kind of binary once it once it's out it's out you don't have time to to um um to uh, to do a correction whereas with the glasses if they get dirty you know wipe them off right. um or even if there's something gets in, into your eye as long as you don't have, if you don't have um contact lenses you know you can wipe it off get the, get get the dust out and you're good to go um so that's kind of first thing to decide is is do you need corrective um, sorry guys i gotta head out good night okay. yep. Ciao. thanks matt see yeah. you later buddy uh, what do you need corrective lenses and if you do then figure out how how you're gonna put them in a, in some sort of frames that are going to work for shooting. Right. So um, these frames, for example, are not very good for shooting, especially prone because they have very thick rims. Um, if I start, if I get in a prone position, I'm looking through here, either looking through the rim or over the rim, so it doesn't really provide a, um, a lot of good viewing surface. And that's what kind of Matt was saying earlier that when you have a bigger um, glasses with the larger frames and your correct, you know, corrective lenses kind of go higher Then you know, depending on, on how you're setting your, your um, head behind the rifle, you can still uh, look through the glasses and, um, and getting that correction. Now, the other thing that's a little bit of, could be a little bit of a problem depending on, again, on the, on the type of eyewear that you have, especially with the regular glasses is they're kind of, um, they're kind of made so that the focal the focal center is right in the middle kind of looking straight out of the glasses and this is where the glasses are perfect and as and as soon as you start getting away from the middle um they are less and less perfect now if you have bifocals or multifocals then you know that completely different changes the game that's a completely different thing i don't think anybody wears multifocals for shooting because um it would be quite difficult as you change your head position to to kind of get the right right thing um but the reason I'm seeing that if this is the kind of focal center, that's the kind of where the glasses are kind of 100%, the, on the edges, the edge performance is not that great. And you can kind of test your own glasses, just kind of move them around and see if the picture changes as you as you move them around. So um, to, if you go to, to, a, to a optician and ask them to make glasses for you, they will often measure the pupil distance. Yeah. Um, and that's so they can get the focal, um, uh, uh, basically focal center uh, that that's fit to your eyes. And that's how they're cut. Um, and another kind of pro tip here, when you go to your eye doctor, optometrist, they will often give you your prescription, but they will not give you the pupil distance, although they measure it. Um, they, it's your data, they can give it to you. So sometimes they will call them some of the shops, kind of want to keep that information to themselves because they want to they want to get your business to get the glasses from them. Right. Um, if you ask them, you know, politely uh, or politely, depending on how you want to get it, but they should give you that information. It's your, it's your information. They right. should be able to give it to you. So if you're going, if you're going to your, you know, eye doctor that has maybe a, a optical store uh, attached to the business, but you want to get your eyes, uh, made, uh, eye glasses uh, um, made somewhere else, um, um, they should give you that. So make sure you ask for the pupil distance because then they, they have every, basically everything um, that uh, they need to make your proper um, uh, proper corrective lenses for you, I whether see. it's contact lenses or... or uh, um, maybe we'll pause to see if, that, if there's any questions. There was quite a bit of information that I kind of dumped on you guys. Yeah, I think... So my always, what I was worried about is as I bring my head down and prone, right, my, my glasses aren't on the same focal plane as my the objective and the IP. So yeah. I wonder if that causes any any issues relative to am I shooting at what I'm seeing or is it or is it is off based on the optics I'm wearing. So it, even if it's not prescription, I worry about those things. Tweak your parallax. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like because you know, the angle of incidence. If we look at the the refraction index, yeah, as it goes Fair through. Is, is is that an issue I need to worry about? Yeah, and you also, I mean, the glasses are set up so you're looking kind of 
straight through them. Yeah. And then a lot of shooting positions, you're looking Correct. more at an angle. So it's a 45 so degree a lot now. More, yeah, exactly. So yeah. there's a lot more uh, um, of, of the glass or, or, yeah. or polymer that lenses are made of that that, that, uh, that stuff is coming through. Yeah. So, um, so that I'm not that trying is, to find a, an excuse for my poor performance. I'm just wondering if that, if, if that's an issue or not. It, it, it could, should I take my yeah. glasses off? You know. And you can t you can test it, right? I mean, this is easily yeah, testable with you, you mount the rifle on a tripod or or, or some yeah, stable I position guess. and kind of and put your head behind and go straight yeah. versus kind of having a um, having on an angle and you can see uh, th how the sight picture changes. Right? Or, or um, shoot with glass without see if your groups are smaller. Yeah. Or, or if the point, there was a point of impact shift or something, I don't know. Yeah. That's, That's all interesting like that. information. Uh, my dilemma is for my little guy because he's, he's got some uh, myopic, myopic. Yeah. And, um, you know, at first I just gave him the normal eye pro that we would wear and thinking yeah. that I assume the scope's going to fix the problem. But he was struggling. So then we let him wear his uh, glasses. So, and, well, you have astigmatism, it's a little different, but for someone who is myopic, what's what's the best option here? It's to wear your prescription or to just let the scope compensate? Well, <laughs> if I the mean, scope can compensate. The, the scope can only compensate so much. Okay. Ideally, you want to have your glass, because your glasses will basically bring you, bring you on a plane level with everyone else. If you can have your prescription pres prescription glasses, they will, they will bring you to that level that that your eyes are as close as perfect as you can get. Right. And then, and because you know, scopes assume that you have your, your vision is kind of, you know, that you know, eighteen inch, twenty inch, you know, twenty, not not necessarily twenty, but I assume good vision, right? Because um, they're not they're made to bring the the picture closer. Mm -hmm. um, they're not made to be eyewear, right? right. So, um, but if if the lens can, if if the scope can correct it, I mean, and you can do a test. I mean, you can do a test and just put a letters up. On the target, ask right? him to read it. Yeah, yeah, ask him to read it, right? Or, or you know, or, or small pictures or whatever, and then just basically ask him to if he can if he can see it. I mean, if he, if he doesn't read, you know, do those whether point left, right, uh, up and down, oh, yeah. thing, um, and do a test, and then see if you can uh, if you can correct it. Uh, so that that would certainly be one. And way if to do it. and if I wanted to get him prescription, is that something that you go to the uh, optometrist for? Sorry, say it again. Uh, if if I wanted to get him prescription shooting glasses, is that something yeah. an optometrist can? I'm assuming that safety glasses is something pretty standard for them, right? Yeah. So th th yeah. There, so there's num there's number of different options, and and I was gonna kind of get get into that in, in a bit, but there's there's um uh, there's quite a few options out there, um and depending what you want to do, um and uh, that really depends. Like if you want to get a uh, dedicated shooting glasses dedicated shooting glasses depending on type of shooting that you're doing could mean a different thing mm -hmm. um shotgunners will have a different type of glasses versus the pistol shooters which is a bullseye shooters which is the guys that shoot with a scope versus versus benchers shooters um it really depends how are you how how is your eye viewing out of the socket and what position your eye is how much movement there is and uh what are you looking what you're looking through, right? So I'm not giving you a straight answer because it will really depend kind of kind of what you're, you want to do. You're gonna get me in trouble when I walk into the optometrist with a rifle and scope on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the thing is, you, I need to get uh, my son fitted for this, please. Yeah, the, the, um, I would say the other way around. You fit you fit the frames to the shooting position, right? And then you put the lens in because the lens is a lens at the end of the day. Gotcha. Right. I mean, I, yeah. let, let me give you a second. I'll grab my shooting glass. So just give me a second. Because there's a couple of options. You can either get the main glass done in prescription, or you have inserts. Right. So like the like tinier versions of the glasses that clip on inside behind the main front element of, of your sunglass pair. And one thing I would like for him is glasses that have a strap rather than the, oh, the headband, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that he can wear the AirPro a little bit more comfortably. So um this is not not necessarily meant for shooting with a scope, but that's that's for that's example my, my prone shooting glass. You see the lens is kind of cow. offset. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. When I get in prone position. I'm looking at 90 degrees through nice. through the lens there, right? And then um, because I'm shooting kind of iron sights, my my eyes lined up with the, with the rear sight, so I don't need to yeah. have a lot of lens surface there. If you're, for example, pistol shooter, you would use a larger larger lens, or if you're shooting with a scope, you can use a larger lens. And then um, 
like I think if I if I was shooting with um, uh, shooting electronic targets, so I don't, yeah. I don't need to need to have that. But if I was shooting with a spotting scope, yeah, I, would, I think I'm at the point where I would need to have a another lens mounted on this side so I can look through the spotting right. scope. Um, so, and, and, so I think that is the perfect setup for a king of 0. 0.22 miles. Yeah, if I've got five minutes to make X number of shots right at yeah. a known distance, then yeah type of setup would be perfect for prs it'd be a little bit more problematic because you're always moving position to position and sometimes you've got weak eyes you know dominant eye you know weak eye and, yeah. or or odd positions where it just wouldn't wouldn't be practical but yeah, I think, that makes I think, sense to me. yeah so when you're changing position a lot i think having having a general glasses with a fairly large lens surface it would probably be the best kind of jack of all trades uh solution so something with the with the larger larger kind of motorcycle going towards the kind of motorcycle wrap around type of um uh type of frames uh where it has a fairly fairly large surface and, and the, the lenses are kind of uh full, fully kind of uh um 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 cover covering your face so that whichever angle you're looking at um yeah. you'll, be, you'll be having a relatively good performance um, so that's probably the the best kind of out of the box solution if you're changing positions quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the prone is the, the most difficult one because the prone is the uh, shooting in prone position is the most kind of unusual way yeah. we view things because you're yeah. looking kind of straight up, up and then you have also have your eyebrows yeah. can interfere with it. <laughs> Right, so if you look kind of straight straight up out of the eye socket, which is not what we normally do, we don't kind of look up like that, right? We're actually more used to looking down on the ground because right. as we you know, as we're walking or working on something, so this is more natural to kind of look down than it is to look right. up, which is what we do when we shoot prone. What, so that's why. What, what was the brand of that those shooting glasses you have, Asmir? These these are champions. Okay. Um, these are champions. I, I have a pair of champions, and Knobloch is the one that 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 we sell. Oh, um, you you sell those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so they are they are under the and and uh, um, and there's the, you know there's there's couple there, there's couple of different kind of options there. Um, right. The nice thing is whether you're buying it from us or whether you're buying for for someone else, uh, if you have a um, vision plan with your health plan, they'll yeah. cover those two or three hundred dollars of your um, eyeglasses, even if you go perfect. To, Cabela's or, or or Canadian Tire and just get protective eyewear. It should be yeah. covered by by your health plan. A lot of people don't cover it. You know, if you get like just a cheapy uh, a protective glasses, um, which I would not recommend. Um, and that's not a sales pitch. If you get those very very cheap protective eyewear, although they might yeah. provide protection, the plastic that they use, the polymer they use, is very very low quality and will distort the light. So they will actually um, make things worse for you. So you just spent two, three thousand dollar on fancy scope and great glass, and then you yeah, and you just negate it. It's the lowest con common denominator. That's right. right. So yeah. So you work <laughs> from Mark Mark Five, and then you go down to Simmons level with uh with using a, yeah exactly. No, that's a, that's a good actually. I haven't thought of it that way, but that's that's a good way to put it. I mean. The, the scope the scope manufacturers are putting all this fancy stuff to make the picture as good as possible and then by, by having kind of a or scratched up even lenses or dirty um you're basically just making it more difficult for yourself um uh, to see things this is pretty cool yeah i'm just so, looking at your website <laughs> um so that's with the correct so that's the corrected now there's two other parts yeah. that i want to talk about and that is so let's talk about polarization now Polarization is in a very, very interesting game. Polarization could be a life changer um, if you're depending on on your eyes. My eyes are extremely photosensitive, so light really bothers uh, bothers me. And 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 I, I squint. You always see me like kind of like this. Looks like I'm just trying to be a cool guy. No, it's just because the light lights bother me. Um, so for me, for my sunglasses, I almost always have a, a some sort of a polarization in there. Um, and polarization yeah. could be either vertical or horizontal. That's what it usually is. And depending on um, depending on the polarization and, and the phone you have, you might you know phone might not be working one way or on another way. Yeah. Um, but that's also how you test if the glasses are polarized or not. Um, but that, by definition, aren't you not losing resolution when you do that? You're essentially looking through a grid. Yes, but the the there's another thing is uh, when light is coming. Um, 
uh, uh, it's coming in for from a lot of different angles. And often you will see, and you can actually, it's very easily tested. Look at the clouds. When you look at the clouds with the polarized glasses, it looks like um, uh, looks like that idyllic picture. Where, whereas you take them off, it just looks kind of almost blurry yeah. um, because it will cut out all the diffuse lighting and only the light that's kind of coming straight uh, to your yeah. eye because the light refracts through the air too, right? Because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of particles in the air and it will it will refract. Uh, the polarization also helps. And different people might experience differently. That it might help with the uh, uh, with the mirage a little bit. So when you look through the mirage, it will cut the polarization will cut through the mirage because the the all the light coming at different angles, it will it will cut it. Um, so, but polarization is also tricky. Like you said, it is cutting out what you're seeing. Um, it will darken things a little bit. Um, yeah. For people that are fishing, polarized polarized glasses are a must. I mean, all the, all all the guys, the fish, it's it's a you have to otherwise you can't see anything in the water. Um, but uh, but is you know there's also aspect of uh, polarized glasses make driving also much easier um, because the yeah. you know, sun is coming in and for sun it's it's quite important especially and it's not necessarily for the sunny days it's the worst when it's kind of that that hazy days those are extremely hard on the on, yeah. on the eyes because the, eye, the light's just coming from all directions not just straight from the sun um, and that's what polarized glasses kind of do they cut the, 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 uh, that light coming from all different directions and filter it out so. Yeah. So polarization is definitely something to consider. Not everybody likes polarized glasses, but that's easy to test. I mean, if you put them on yeah. and see if it's more comfortable for you or not. Um, again, personally for me, it, it's a must, but not everybody likes yeah. to, to, to wear that. So that's a, that's a fairly easy binary test to do. Yeah. Um, and the All the mine are polarized. They just, yeah. I just find it more, my eyes are less tired at the end of the day. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a physical difference I can feel after spending... And, and I spend tons of full days out on the range, so it's yeah. I, I it's, typically it's wear polarized Ray Ban for mm -hmm. driving and just walking around. But when I shoot, I feel like I can't see anything with them on, so I oh yeah, actually... that's too dark for you. Yeah, 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 and 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 yeah, and that's that's a, that's a very good easy test. And then the, the 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 last but not the least is the color filters, and that's uh, this is where kind of all the theories. Uh, except for a few kind of fall in the water because it's very, very individual. So what, what might work for one person on one day might might or might not work on the other day. So it, first of all, it's very personal. Some people like to have a little bit more uh, dulling kind of uh, filters, so more on the gray side. Um, you know, if you're a Ray-Ban guy, G, G, G15 is a very popular kind of that's, that's uh, you know, kind of very standard uh, Ray-Ban glass. It's very, very nice, uh, uh, nice filter. Um, and provides quite comfortable kind of uh, uh, filtering, um, but uh, um, you know, and then you know whether or or if you want something more that with the, with the warm colors, something that's more like a, a yellowy, orangey, pink, um, you know, red kind of hues of the filter, which kind of livens and brightens things up. But that's going to depend on the individual eye. Um, in in general, whatever you have, they're all going to be cutting out light, which means you know, when we have a sunglasses, they will have with, with certain color. Um, they will be cutting out light, which means there's lo le less light coming in. So you have to be kind of careful that if you have a super, super dark glasses, again, going back to the scope, if you have a super expensive scope with a big objective and, you know, fancy filters and everything, you slap on very dark sunglasses, it's look it's going to look like you're looking through a cheap scope. So you have to kind of balance that. Um, you you, you want to make it easy on your eyes, but you don't want to block too much light. Um, and that's going to, that's really going to depend on the, on the individual. So you have to kind of, um, experiment, um, and practice, you know, sorry, not practice, but test out what, um, what works for you. Um, Rick was talking about knoblock glasses, like they, 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 some of them, um, most of the models come with the various filters. So if you're looking through the, uh, for example, the shotgun pairs have a clip on filter and it kind of goes over the whole frame. Um, and, uh, depending on the, um, for, for for example, shotgun is a good actually to illustrate the example. If you're looking at the orange disc versus the background that that is changing in color. It could be gray, it could be blue, it could be you know pink or red, depending depending what what time of day it is. So you want to have the filter that's going to enhance that contrast between mm -hmm. the the background and and, and, and the clay pigeon. And um, they really make a big difference. I mean, I started skeet not too long ago, and 
at first I was like, oh, look at these guys with their pink glasses. How cute, you know? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's a good reason for it. Uh, the, you'll see purple, red, pink. Yeah. Uh, that orange disc just pops all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And when you just shoot, need to I... agree to all paint the target the same color, and then we can start like yeah. using the yeah. same idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, but it's also you know, it's it's also what what your eyes work for. For example, I have a yellow filter in my um, when I shoot iron sights because I find that uh, um, um, it's yellow filter, but it makes everything more green. But it also enhances that uh, yellow and black is the is the most uh, uh, perceptive uh, perceptive contrast. So basically, with the yellow filter, if you if you're looking at the bullseye target, um, that makes that huge contrast, and that black really pops out and sharpens the edges. Um, so yellow is a really easy to recommend, or yellow that the, the the shades of yellow are very easy to recommend if if you have kind of like a a, a white and black um, contrast that you're looking for, and that will really enhance that. For the other ones, you kind of have to experiment with, with what it, depending on on what um, the type of targets that you're looking at. And also in the individual, every, everybody's eyes are a little bit different. Um, so, so those are those are kind of in general kind of things that that your eyeglasses. Now, when it comes to the fit of the glasses, I mean, we, we talked a little bit about Asian fit. There's also what I call the big head fit. Um, if you have a wide head like myself, um, if you have sm smaller glasses, they'll they'll be pinching you, especially if you're wearing um, uh, ear cups. Um, if if they're pressing on your frames, that that could be extremely painful after a full day. Um, so so now you have to have the both glasses and the um, uh, the ear cups or or ear muffs need to kind of be working together. I've seen the guys that actually cut out um, the uh, little grooves. So when they oh, yeah. go, they will not press them there because it, if you have a tight fit, they they can they can it could be quite painful. Like for the first fifteen minutes, not so much, but if you're wearing for six, seven hours, it could be, uh, it becomes excruciatingly uh, painful. I get yeah. that every time we do a maple seed. I mean, that's essentially a, a so 10 you, hour of. You should get the gel cups for your oh, yeah? Air Pro. It'll make a huge difference. We'll get to that. Ever since we upgraded uh, all of the all of <clears throat> our, our Air, Air Pro for that, it's it's changed the, it's it's reduced the amount of discomfort. I don't even notice it unless. I've got different headgear on or something. Yeah. I'll try that. What, what kind of ear pro do you have? Standard uh, Walker. Howard Lights? I think nothing fancy. A Walker? Yeah. I yeah. wonder if they've got a gel cup. Walker Razor, I think. Something yeah. Like some of them have, I think aftermarket guys can sometimes make gel cups for them. I know some of the, the other ones, like the 3M Tax Sports, have uh, gel cup options directly from 3M. But I'd look we in were, the gel we cups. We were looking at those, actually. Anybody have any experience with those, the 3M ones? Um, they're, because I've been, I've been, uh, we've been. Those are the ones I use. I've been using yeah. them since, you know, eight, nine years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're for like 130 bucks or something. And just upgrade to the gel cups. And it's, it's a good balance between cost and performance. So yeah. It's, it's worth it. But the gel cups make the huge difference. Yeah. yeah. They work, yeah, they work well. Yeah, and that, that's also you know if you can have in ear protection, which for twenty works for yeah. twenty two. If you're going with with um, um, anything beyond twenty two, where there's, there's yeah. concussive effect as well, yeah. uh, in ear don't don't work as well, yeah. um, and, and sometimes actually even not recommended because they transmit the the, the, the concussive. Uh, oh really? Okay. To the skull. Interesting. Um, so the uh, the in ear are quite effective because first of all, you know, they, they don't interfere with your with your uh, cheek position on, yeah. on, on the rifle, um, and then they also don't don't press on on the on the, on right. the, on the glasses, yeah. so they're, they're more comfortable. Interesting. Um, I've 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 never tried in ears. I'm always afraid of just losing them all the time, just because of the just just how I am with gear. Yeah, but. Uh, I'll look for a set. Yeah, and then and then also, I mean, when you like for twenty two, when you're out in the open field, um, very few rifles are, are making. Yeah, you know, they're, they're loud enough that it will damage your ears. Although last time I spoke with my with my um, uh, my, my hearing doctor, he, he said that you should always wear it. Although it, yeah, even though it doesn't hurt your ears, it's still damaging your yeah. Your it's hearing. cumulative. Yeah, correct. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. he knew right away that I was a shooter. Because yeah, because I mean, very typical shooters. The left, left. If you're right-handed, the left ear. Um, oh, is that right? Very quicker. Yeah, because your right really? ear is 
is yeah, kind yeah. of behind the rifle is protected it's like, hey, you're, you're shooting you're shooting right handed this is your position like yeah how did you know I was like well that's your your hearing is 3d and this is what the echo chamber kind of um showed interesting uh, yeah so um yeah um yeah so and we'll you know we can maybe spend an episode talking about hearing as well yeah um, yeah for sure the future well definitely um, very interesting i think part of you know it's, it's a it's a it's a little it's it's a little research topic and people don't understand you know all the different <clears throat> factors that go into you know what affects what you see and what and how you hear down range you know for for us 22 you know i'm i'm using it less and less because i'm I think I'm going deaf probably. <laughs> so, because it doesn't bother me, except for the guys that are shooting the high velocity force or, yeah, or whatever, uh, whatever high velocity rounds. So there's a definite loud crack that is uncomfortable, but regular 22s uh, don't really bother me, even if you never, even during a, you know, a teaching event. So, but yeah. And, yeah, I mean, and and unfortunately, both eyes and and ears are quite sensitive, and yeah. as as you damage them, they they kind of don't fix themselves. Right, Correct. it's not like mus muscle tears, muscle will, will regrow back, and and, yeah. and all that. Like as as you damage your hearing, it doesn't Correct. kind of grow back. You can't rest. Yeah, and like so I, I find that at the end of a day, the the thing that I feel the most are my eyes are just they're just burning. They're just so tired and dry. Yeah. I think that they're the ones that think take the most abuse next next to my feet. My eight yeah. feet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and we take it for granted, right? I mean, like, uh, um, I've, um, I've experienced it. Like, I've experienced it even when I was in school. My, my marks went up after I got glasses because I, I yeah. was sitting in the back row because I wanted to be a cool kid. I couldn't yeah. see what was on the blackboard or what was on an overhead projector, especially in the large auditorium. And then I started wearing glasses, and all of a sudden, I could actually take, you know, uh, take notes and i could yeah. see what uh what, what was being what was nice. being presented and um um but you know you don't think about it it's like you know it's like i can see right yeah. um and uh and even the small changes can make a can make a big difference um yeah. and unfortunately all of us as we as we age like once you hit that kind of you know it's different for every person but you know at, at some point your your um the 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 depth of of your of your vision is going to change yeah, so for sure wear bifocals or whatever uh, works for you so that's just kind of inevitable it hits everybody yeah. at a different stage of life Correct. Um, but it's uh, your eyes will definitely deteriorate over the lifetime yeah. um and uh um i'm also 100 percent convinced this is why you youth shooters are so quick to learn the skills it, um it's because they're even if they have if, if the eyes are not perfect they are healthier yeah. um, than adult eyes and they're quicker to adopt Right, so even if they if they if the vision is not perfect, the eyes are actually better and um, to uh, acquiring and seeing the targets, and that's why they they, they uh, you know it's like oh youth shooters they know they 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 you know they can they can do this so much easier, and I think I believe part of that is the is the vision as well, just that the eye yeah. can adopt itself much much easier to to be to change. We're, we're, fight, we're, we're fighting a losing game, Asmir. Yeah, well, we're, we're, uh, they're you know, on their way up and we're on our way down from a. From old, auditory and uh, old age and treachery yeah. beats youth and skill, right? <laughs> True. I'll just keep making it more age, 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 uh, age specific. Yeah, you know, it'll be some sort of life lesson question they have to answer before they can shoot the stage, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, cool. it, it like I, I think uh, you know if if I can just recommend one thing for everybody to take back. You know, go, if you haven't gone for eye checkup, go go for eye checkup. You know that there's a there's also, you know, when you go to eye doctor, they, they'll measure eye pressure and, and check for yeah. early signs of, you know, cataract and all of those things. And so, some of them are, um, they, they can spot early and, 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 and yeah. you know, you can, um, you can, they're treatable. Um, sure. And then, you know, if you need corrective eyewear, um, you, you know, or update your prescription, um, you know, a lot of us spend a lot of time, um, you know, I spend a lot of time uh, um, in front of a computer screen, um, um, if you're if you're noticing they're getting headaches that's another thing i was getting massive massive headaches um and then these glasses have a, a blue light light a small blue light filter in them um, which is very common for um for a lot of people that spend a lot of time in front of computer screens um and essentially what that what that does it cuts out the blue light which is not natural doesn't it naturally occur um and um uh, depending on the person everybody's again different 
but uh, it, it might just make it a little bit easier for you to, you know, to go through the day looking at the screens. Sure. And again, I was getting like I was getting migraines, um, you know, and uh, it wasn't like I could change my 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 profession. But uh, so, but uh, uh, um, just small changes in in the prescription sure. eyewear can make a big difference. For sure. Um, yeah. Like my vision was getting blurry in my left eye like three years ago. It like dramatically changed and finally went in and they found the cataract. So they had a, I guess they, they cataract surgery, they replaced the lens or something. So, and now it's pretty good. Yeah. Like within, within a few days I was, it was perfect. It was perfect vision, which, which is amazing. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the and yeah. eye surgeries, I'm, I mean, I get, I'm getting more effective and shorter yeah, um, you know, less like again, yeah, and and more yeah. affordable too. I mean, uh, um, than than they were, you know, 10, 15 years yeah. ago, even. Mine was free, free is oh, free is affordable. That's free, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I regret not getting the other eye though for fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, would have been would have been matched pair. Because right now, what happens is when I'm shooting, because we have a weak side, strong side. Yeah. So when I change, I've got to refocus my my uh, my optic because yeah. I've got two different. Two different prescriptions now so that's my excuse why i just shoot a blurry it doesn't really affect my score <laughs> so yeah 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 but but i mean it, it, it a lot of guys will do um one eye because they don't they don't trust it right so it's like oh if they screw up at least you know i can have my um you know weak, that's true weak side and and yeah. uh, um and again the surgeries are you know at least from when i was doing some research for myself they, they're quite high success rate and yeah. they're, they're quite good um, yes, um, but not a hundred percent, you know, not hundred percent. Exactly. Not hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have a cataract or something like that, then you don't have a choice. Yeah. And yeah. It's like, yeah, you're going to be basically surgery. blind or you can do a surgery and it's going to fix it. So then, then, then it's like, yeah, might as well do it. Yeah. It was, it was pretty, it was pretty good in and out. And within a couple of days, you're hundred percent, which was pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention, like the, now, uh, most of the um, glasses can have all three that we mentioned. So you can have um, all three kind of effects. So you can have your corrective lenses in there. You can have polarization, and you can yeah. have uh, some sort of a filter in there. So okay. whether that which which you choose to have, that really depends. Generally, you don't have a polarizers for the regular eyewear. Yeah. Um, cause you're going to be wearing it inside. It's usually sunlight, sunlight that we want to polarize. Yeah. Um, um, but, uh, if you're driving a lot, driving with some sort of a s sunglasses, something yeah. that will block the sun and your corrective, you know, and, and if you, if your eyes are weak enough that you can't dr drive without your corrective eyelenses, like, like it is for me, my driver license says that I have to drive with a, okay. um, with corrective eyewear anyway. So I have, I don't leave the house without my sunglasses so you'll see my sunglasses always the kind of hanging on my shirt because if i step outside it's just i um as i said my eyes are quite photosensitive so i have them on me all the time right um and um yeah that's why we got into wiley x i mean that was that was we were at a trade show and they had model that fits a wide head so which is which is omegas um if you have Perfect. wide head they they yeah they fit they, they, they kind of Fit wide, wider head, and and uh, yeah, that's why we kind of got into. It. And I got, you know, I can put prescription lenses in there, and and uh, yeah, and it was done deal. And, yeah. Uh, um. So, I'll have to stop by and check out the wide head Asian yeah. fit versions. I'll I'll find one. That'll be good. Yeah, it'd be good to get prescriptions. That way, you can just see perfectly. Because right now, I don't know what I'm missing really. Yeah. Like, I do have a mild prescription, but it's not a hundred percent. So. My left eye is pretty good, but my right eye is, I know it's getting weaker and weaker. So it'd be good to have perfect stereoscopic or 2020 yeah. stereoscopic vision. And, and there's a lot, there's a lot of different options for like out there. I mean, like the, with, with shooting, we kind of have very specific requirements on the, 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 the shape of the glasses and yeah. the view, viewable area. But the the the, the rest of the principles are kind of same as for any, any kind of eye, eyewear. Right more or less so you know the, the 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 fit and the um and the the lenses and the content of what, what lenses do is pretty much the same it's just that we need to have it in, in a specific position so because we don't look straight out of the eye socket kind of thing that's what always worried me was what am i what am i 
what I'm missing or what 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 am I doing? What could be happening wrong because I'm not, you know, perfectly looking through. I'm looking at a 45 through different media, right? So, mm-hmm. but but everyone else does the same thing. So I don't know. And people are scoring. Yeah, well, it's tricky. It's tricky when you're shooting with a scope, right? Because yeah. um, the, the um, your the scope makes makes things look good, and this is how we choose yeah. the scope. We choose the scope that makes things look good. Um, to but us. We don't, but to us, right? To our, yeah. our, 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 and this is why you know uh, um, when choosing a scope, like you should, you should, you know, if you have a chance, you should look through it. Um, yeah. And you know, even within the relatively similar specs from scope to scope. The filters yeah. will be slightly different and it will appear a little bit different to our eye but then right. um, um when you're choosing a scope you're looking kind of generally straight through but when you're yeah. shooting through the scope you're not looking straight through so you <laughs> might not be actually getting out of it what you think you're getting out of it and like right. thomas said um if you have a suboptimal um uh, uh, uh light kind of coming to you from the scope it doesn't really matter how good the scope is yeah, um, you're not really getting maximum performance out of it. Yeah. So interesting. Um, we have to yeah. we have to do some testing. Yeah, sounds like sounds like a good way to spend time in the range, with and without glasses and different different filters, different pol- yeah. you know polarized yes polarized no. Yeah, awesome. Thanks to think about that's excellent, Nazmir. Thanks for uh, coming out tonight and uh, you know people. It's not just iPro. It's it's vision, right? That's why. That's why you open that way. It's yeah, the things that we never think about, and and as you know, everyone's everyone's going to get older. You can't fight it, so it's important to know, you know, what's the strategy once your vision starts to degrade to the point where you need to have some assistance. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to look at those shooting glasses for the King of Point Two Two Miles, just because you know, get the you know what good is perfect optics if you don't have corrected vision at the same time yeah i think you're missing is that the format on. of the, by the way is that i've been meaning to ask you, is the format of that post that i saw in the calendar but is, it is should that... it should be on the website if not i can send you the the overview it's it's all prone i mean because we're still trying to rework the um the form the, the the day so it's a it's a full day of events so for those that are are listening it's the king of 0.22 miles event and uh as part of the rimfire nation uh, Nationals Week in Saskatoon. So the King of 0.22 Miles is actually several events in the same day. We'll have a bunch of long range steel that people can just, you know, plink at, come out and play. Uh, there's uh, a short course ELR, which is going to be small uh, Pepsi can size targets. So it's a, it's a mini Pepsi can ELR. So if you don't have the fancy, you know, higher end optics, you can see how far you can get, you know, going three for three on Pepsi cans that are going out 25, 25 yards uh, increments. Then we'll have the one third Ipsic ELR, which is the same concept, just stretched out further. Then we'll have the uh, 12, 12 inch square plates kind of stepped out even further. And then we'll finally have the, the, the true king of 0.22 miles ELR starting at uh, 350 is the first scoring targets. There might be some sight ins at 250 or 300, but um, but then we'll go all the way out to uh, 700 is is the maximum that we'll go for there. And if and if there's a tie, then we'll go for you know sudden death tie break at at uh, 700. First guy to miss uh, loses. So it'll be it'll be a series of events. So it's not just one big event. It's it's more of hey, you know, we can have something for kids. We can have something for new shooters, and we'll have something for more uh, intermediate. Some for the the veterans, and some for the true, you know, true rimfire ELR with the Charlie Terrax or the adjustable bases and and the the forty mil tubes and the eighty mils of travel. Right, those are the kinds of things that you know some of us will never want to spend that kind of money um, on 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 such a specific discipline but for those that can we'll we'll have some but i think we'll have something for everyone so within the well, range of yeah. yeah what i was thinking i mean i was just talk, talking to a friend of mine and you, you like and jp and i were discussing as well you can use um your not necessarily your prs setup. correct yep. you can use your bench rest or yep. other you can use second focal plane scope yep. because the distances are known Correct. Um, so you can go with a tiny, tiny, you know, fine, fine reticles yeah. on it, um, and a lot of magnification because you're shooting yep. prone. So the Cytron bit... eight, eight to thirty twos, and or the 
you know, the old standbys. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah, so and 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 that's the and I think you might get different, you know, a, a little bit different crowd in there yeah. as well that, that sure. are kind of shooting, uh, shooting yeah. doors as well, and especially because it's prone. It's all um, it's all prone. Yeah, so I might yeah, come no, out. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> should come out visit some family, spend the day, check out all the different events. It's it's going to be. We, might, we have we have very close friends in Saskatoon, Good. and we're we're seriously thinking about it. Yeah, make, make it uh, I've I've always enjoyed uh you know spending time in saskatoon oh kareem saying mount that s8 on your tesla rifle for king of 0.22 i think that would be phenomenal asmir i think yeah. i think you need to represent the tesla brand yeah i should eh <laughs> yeah 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 it's a repeater right yeah there is perfect setup it's not a tesla is not a repeater it's a single oh, it's shot yeah it's a single shot. but it's not a speed event right i mean relatively speaking relatively speaking i mean you yeah. can single load and not be yeah uh, be, i mean it's a five minutes can be a five minute stage yeah so it's a little a little pressed but again maybe for the longer when I mean, we haven't nailed so it's five five minutes per we'll see we haven't nailed down the the true elr king of point two to the, the main line competition timings yet because you're because basically it's a it well we have so it's five minutes per target and you've got to get three hits out of ten to advance to the next one yeah so that's that's five minutes to make three hits out of a maximum ten rounds that's so, that's pretty decent five minutes for 10, 10 rounds yeah that's that's yeah even yeah. even when you like I'm thinking like even with a with a with a single shot rifle that's uh you can have a you can have a loading caddy. Kareem would be your loading caddy. Yeah, yeah, but it, you you can like you can do, um, yeah, that's that's doable. That's doable. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think for you the you only need fewer shots than ten. Yeah, so I think for the other disciplines you've got, uh, I think twenty rounds, twenty or thirty. We haven't again, we haven't nailed down how many chances do you get to do from the Pepsi the Pepsi can stage. How you have five minutes to do twenty five rounds. To make three for three hits across across the five or six targets out there. So again, so we're still ironing those bits out, but it's it's meant it's meant to have there's gonna be an event for everyone, which is which is meant to test your accuracy and precision. And there's gonna be a guy that's gonna do all of them. It's it, gonna be, yeah. Yeah. There's always a guy that does all the events. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Again, so there's no there's no set. It's just, you know, you'll go in, we'll record it at the end of the day, we'll We'll tabulate all the scores and see who the who the king of 0.22 miles is in Canada. It's gonna be fun. Then yeah. there's the you know the, the Pepsi can challenge. Then there's the Ipsic, uh, and then the 12, 12, 12 inch square. So that'll be that'll be fun. We'll drink the Pepsis first before we put the for, for like sure. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's gonna be good. I can't I can't wait. And, and we'll we'll publish more information about the events as as the day gets by. We're just Right now, I'm just so wrapped up in getting the season started, getting all the all the events nailed down, and then we can start publicizing kind of what's going on. Like our road trip is is going to start soon. Our first one is June fourth, Range Day in Kelowna, so it's not that far away. It's it's a month away, for God's sakes. My gosh, I better get ready. Good <laughs> anyway. percentage of that you're going to spend driving, like you're going to be uh, doing, it's doing not not your truck. Not yeah, it's it's going to be. I don't know. It's gonna be ten thousand kilometers, probably this this trip, maybe more. I'll be bouncing. I'll be bouncing around back and forth. So yeah, maybe ten to twelve. Yeah. You're taking your trailer with you. I am. Yeah, because I'll need all of the, all of the gear for because okay. we're running all of the events, right? So Competition Academy and X22 will need backer boards and all of the targets. And King of Point Two Two Miles will have uh, all of the big targets with us. So. It's it's almost dialed in. I've just got to make a couple of changes. So yeah, so the trip to New Brunswick was kind of the test run. So so far so good. Now it's just a matter of getting all that plus all of the camping gear in there at the same time. So no worries. Perfect, Asmir. Well, it's almost eleven o'clock. I think uh, I think we've got to get uh, folks into bed, and yep. certainly I've got to get. Got an early start tomorrow, so yeah, I appreciate here. your your insight. It's uh, always good to have you, and as a as a as a guest, and also as a as a sponsor, and just a genuine guy. We'll have to 
we'll have to get together for Czech Vars and uh, and Schwarpa. Sounds good. One of these we'll days, burn, we'll burn some meat on the grill as well. Sounds That's good. Maybe on my way on my way back from the west. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Asmir. Once Thank again. You. Thanks very much for all your support. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Don't forget to like and subscribe. The Rimfire Nation podcast is available on most of the uh, podcast serving services and also on our Canadian Rimfire Precision Series YouTube channel. Take it easy. I look forward to seeing you guys on the firing line. See you later.